we want to talk to Omni Skeptic, who is calling in from Canada. Omni Skeptic, what's going on? Hey, how's it going, guys? Going pretty hey. good. Talking about ghosts. So, what's going on? Uh, well, I was just listening to Bridger earlier um, talk about um, you know having this thing that uh, this some kind of device. I don't remember what it was. Measure um, something in the room, and you know, despite it being told to presumably not work in that situation, and it got me thinking about the types of contradicting belief beliefs that both the paranormal investigators might have amongst themselves. So like they might disagree with each other as well as um, a disagreement between the investigators and the people that they're sort of like being contracted by to go in and investigate, right? Like the people that mm. live in the house or own the property or whatever. And so I was wondering what, when you would go in to investigate, would you guys all collaborate until you came up with like one explanation and then that would be the official explanation everybody went with or would you just see some activity and everybody's sort of left to their own devices to come up with why great question it, okay um it depends um if we were going into a, a private home and somebody was having a situation and they were you know afraid of something going on in their house whatever we would be very scientific um, we would be, we wouldn't share information. We would go, we would do our own investigations individually. We would go home, we would review everything. And then all that information was sent separately to the team leader who would then put it all together and then write up a report. Um, and the conclusion would be based on what we felt was good evidence. Um, and that's what was included in the report. So it, we tried not to, we didn't sit around a table and decide what happened. Um, there was definitely a procedure in place for that. Um, and as far as disagreements, there was a thing that you, you reminded me of something, a question that I had at some point along the way. Um, I had been told that residential, not residential, residual hauntings are hauntings where it just kind of replays so they're not intelligent they're not able to interact with people they just you know somebody comes down the steps every day at three o'clock you know that type of thing that just it's like ingrained in history um but then evps were supposed to be um implanted onto the audio tape somehow using their energy and it was supposed to be like they were doing it so in that case, you could never get a recording of a residual haunting because they didn't have any intelligence, but there were always recordings of residual hauntings. So that never made sense to me. <laughs> um, and I never did get an explanation for that. So. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Omni, what do you think about that? Yeah. It's just like, I'm I'm trying to imagine different scenarios where like some kind of conflict arises. Like, what would happen if the person invited you in and wanted you to take a look, but they had like some like religious understanding of what was going on? So instead of like this sort of paranormal kind of demon, they're thinking, oh, it's a Christian demon or something. Mm. Like, right? Would you yeah. tell them that's not how the spirits work, or would you sort of try to explain it within their framework, or like how how do differences in opinion of explanation like work themselves right. out um well it would depend on the case um but if we went into somewhere at, at, to a house and they had like a certain religious belief we would go by what they believed as much as possible um we didn't necessarily have people from all religions in the group i would say that most people were um were not any specific denomination i would say they were most like mostly christian light kind of more spiritual if that makes sense um but we always tried to respect whatever religion the the client would have um and if the client already had an explanation they probably wouldn't be calling us because they the people that called us wanted an explanation they didn't know what was going on so there's not usually a conflict with the client and also, um, for people who are probably wondering as well, you this was all a volunteer saying. effort. Absolutely. Um, this wasn't anything that you weren't profiting off of this in any way, um, as far as from what you told me, at least. That's correct. Um, and uh, this was just a group of people who were really interested in trying to help people with their, yeah. you know, paranormal problem. But I think it's so funny that you talk about 
this idea of, well, we wanted to respect the religious beliefs of the people right. that are there because it's like, if this is a real scientific explanation, wouldn't there just be like one explanation? Like that's a demon. That's a demon that you're seeing in there. Oh yeah. No, no, no. This is like, this is like Beelzebub. Okay. This is specific. But instead, it's kind of like, well, maybe this is something else. This could be, you know, maybe a little more, um, a little more wringing of the hands there, right? Yeah. Well, if if the um, people with discernment in the group decided that it was demons, then we always went Catholic. Yeah. Just because, because yeah. they're, I, I don't know, because. Because well, we did, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I, I I guess I do know this. You did mention before that um, there were some exorcisms you did too. Oh, it yeah. wasn't all just investigating right. at yeah. a house overnight, right? So, yeah. How did can just can I know we got Ami on the phone still, but I, I am curious. What does that look like? How do you explain? Did they come from the Bob Larson school of? of uh exorcisms here like did you have a specialist did you get a young priest and an old priest like what's, what's no there happening? was there was one person in the team that was a um priest i forget the exact title he had um and there were some other spiritual people that would help and they would we would go through it was usually a, a how a home exorcism not necessarily a person although we did do blessings on people as well but we would walk through and do you know, prayers and incense and I don't know, you do different, different herbs for different you demons. Know, I don't know. Yeah. Some, sometimes I, it never worked, but the cool thing is I never believed in demons. So I was really good for those cases because they never affected me. You would think, you'd think that you'd want your whole team to be on the same page about the demon thing. <laughs> yeah, well, it was cool. I I was the safety net because the demons didn't affect me because I didn't believe in them. So if something went bad, I could pull everybody out. Funny how that works when you don't I believe know. in demons and the demons. Right? Don't see Looking demons. back, it makes so much sense. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh wow! But like, yeah, I mean, I guess that like I could see how. Oh, you have a history of not being affected by demons. Let's 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 throw let's throw Bridget in there. You know, let's see what happens. I, I, I yeah, that. sure. Why not? Yeah. Well, Omni, did you have any um, other comments or questions here before we uh, wrap up this call? Uh, just a final one, uh, just a, almost a side note. But Bridget, yeah. do you miss it? Like, isn't we have the a sort of many people find a, an allure to, you know, the mystical and the nebulous and like having the mystery. And so I was just wondering, like, do you miss that sort of atmosphere? Mm. You know what? I miss the people i miss the camaraderie with that group of people and but i don't miss the woo at all i i do yoga now and i have to ignore all that because i just like to stretch <laughs> you know what i mean like well, i don't want to hear demonic, all that. you know there, that's oh, well, shh, <laughs> <laughs> um but but yeah i i miss the the group it was a very close-knit group of people and that i miss but but as far as the ghost hunting it no, it was a lot of work and it was a lot of sitting around in the dark being bored. Yeah, that I, I could do without that. Although I think it would be fun now to go and do an investigation through through my eyes now, you know? I, that, is, that is a life goal that I have now. I would like to be a part of a quote unquote real investigation. Well, we'll have to do that, Dan. We'll have to set that up somehow. Hey, look. I'm 100% down for, to know. go on a real ghost trip. I want, like, I will go Zach Baggins so fast. I will. I don't will, do that. I, I don't will, ever like, go Zach Baggins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know. There's something about that, that narrative of just being the lone investigator trying to figure out the truth of this ghost situation. Just, I, I don't know. Just makes me happy. But you, you're, you're um, gonna get so bored so quick. Yeah, you know, I guess that's true, right? I guess you are just actually sitting in a house for like eight hours at night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Omni, thanks so much for the questions. Um, thanks great, for the questions. That was yeah. that was good. Great questions and um, yeah, stuff that I was curious about too. So I'm glad uh, we talked about that. 